right guys we uh we had to split up today so i'm with trevor we're gonna hop on the bikes and we're gonna head up to this little area that we've hunted many years trying to intercept the elk because they're coming from their feeding area to their bedding area casey and trent and andy are uh kind of a few miles away from us and so uh we're running out of days guys but we're gonna keep going hard so we that's the reason we split up is it's more fun hunting together but i think it's gonna be more efficient covering more country with two different teams we gotta try it for at least one day yeah give it a try so that's the program we haven't heard any bugles yet but last night when we were walking out we had several that were screaming at us so hopefully uh there's some kind of a cow and estrus and they're fired up we're gonna create a cow and estrus. yeah Tre trevor's gonna call him a bull i'm gonna shoot it and then be done today, okay? We'll be, we'll be tagged out. That's the plan. And we're live. And rolling. <laughs> we're live. Guys, we just found all the elk. We found all, all the of elk. them. And they're not around Which us. Which ones did we find? All of them. We've got what we would call a little bit of a rut fest over there. There's six bulls, three cows. It was funny because we were watching, one, there was one hot cow in there. We watched a young bull chasing her. And then from down below, saw another bull come up and a little more mature bull chase him off kept doing that four or five the fifth bull is the giant bull and chased them all off now he has this hot cow brian and eric are a lot closer or brian and trevor somebody are probably a thousand to 1500 yards from them but they need to move fast they're kind of just milling around they're still a couple yeah. way down there we don't have a phone scope so you at home just yeah. live through our excitement right now this is, this is the bull we chased the other day that was humongous. You think so? Yeah, I guarantee it. With the cows? Yeah. Is it? I haven't seen him yet then. Look at this bull. I'd say he's decent. To quite decent. Jeez. <laughs> decent. Well, he's wide. Dude, he just ran for no reason and then stopped. He's chasing those other bulls. And now he's screaming. And I'm standing up here with my... Spot and scope it. Dude, he's screaming. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we call a callable bull. So we here at Born and Raised Outdoors look for this this exact scenario. <laughs> okay? Not this scenario, but that scenario. We're just spectators. Should we there. do it again? Not here, <laughs> but there. <laughs> Okie dokie. Dude, those guys they're gonna be in a pretty if they get up in the front of that, by the time that wind kind of switches, that should be a freaking game over, shouldn't it? Yeah. If they don't kill one, I'm going to be so mad. I'm probably not going to talk to them. I won't talk to them for a month. Let's give them, let's, let's give them the, the cold shoulder. <laughs> give them a sound thrashing. <laughs> yeah, going to happen. Going to happen. All right, we just dumped the bikes, guys. We're going to go take a... Run over a few ridges. <laughs> it's gonna get a little. Um, We've been doing a lot of running. A lot of running and gunning, but uh, Casey's spotted some bulls, kind of way down there. So we're gonna see if we can find them. <laughs> Never looks the same when you're here, but he thinks that there's a hot cow in there because he said there's several bulls that are like fighting and sparring, and that's we haven't seen that for a little while. So we're gonna hustle down there and Hope see if we, we should can get in the middle. Them. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they're screaming their face off, but. That is the plan. All you can do is just go give it a shot. 
hopefully it works out. So I have a couple waypoints I saved on my Onyx from the last few seasons. And I am able to go back and reference where Casey's telling me from. how far to say. Let's see, so if I use the map tools and I go a line distance from where we are to 0.75 miles. So oh, we can do that. Gotta roll. Let's do it. Gotta go, gotta go. Alright, we're marching it out. Kinda checking our phones and making sure there's a little bit of private we have to work around. So, we're gonna get up to the corner and see if we can see them. Spotted them. They're further than we thought. So we're basically just trying to intercept them. They're heading up this canyon to go bed. We're gonna have to kind of go at an angle. Yeah. Or else they're gonna pass us. So trying to beat a herd is tough. We're just heading that way as fast as we can. And hopefully we can just get in the mix. Get them fired up with some cow calls, some bugles, and if we can't get the herd bull, try to pick off a satellite bull. So I love your attitude. That's the plan. Okay, let's move. Well, we've made it a mile, maybe more. Just running almost the whole way. We're close. I think we got. I think we are near the elk. They're in one of these ridges. We're just gonna sit and listen, see if we can hear them walking, or maybe use some calling happening. And then try to divide some land. The winds, there's not a lot of wind, but the morning thermals are taking it down, so we should be pretty good on wind so far. It's hard to estimate these elk move so fast. You always think you can intercept them, and then you look, and they're a couple hundred yards ahead of you. So. Or a mile. Or a mile. Or two. Gotta just uh, be patient. Try to pinpoint them before we start doing anything too crazy, like people on a call on a rig or whatever. Tack one. We can call him in, dude. He's a satellite. I think we're gonna go try to see if we can get this satellite bolt. Down below them to get better wind. So that's the plan. We gotta, we gotta circle a little bit. We just found this bull after we dropped elevation and he's just kind of walking down into this draw. It's like 200, 150, yeah, probably 200 yards. We're gonna loop below him and just set up and start calling, see if we can get him to come in. So here we sit, looking through the looking through the, the spotter. Here we sit alone again. And we have a coyote down below us barking. Yes. Talk about wildlife. There's just wildlife everywhere. Just so so much wildlife. It's just really neat. B Mac and Trevor are hopefully on these bulls. They should be able to hear them at least by now because we can see through the spot and scope. They're just screaming, crossing the fingers that they're somewhere close to over there. Elk hunting must be slow because we're both just blue facing the heck out of it right now. I, got, I posted a picture of Trevor's bull, okay? We're That's out of the photo. game. We are we are way out of the game today. We were hoping the elk would be in this canyon and then we could use Brian and Trevor to spot for us, but uh, things went south. Reverse. We're spotting for them. Reverse. Yeah, that, that was a perfect situation. Hopefully they'll get in there close. I think they will. There's six or seven bulls in there. Three cows is all. There's a hot cow in all. Every single one of those bulls, we're trying to steal that cow, but the biggest bull has the cows. But all other, six other of those bulls are trying to take her. So they can get in close and start cow calling. Hit, hit, hit them with the cow calls. 
it's going to be... Is that what you would do, is go in there and cow call? Dark. First I'd find them, and I'm sure you can probably find them just for... Listening. Taking the earplugs out. Yeah. And then I'd go in there and start with cow calls, definitely. All those other bulls are going to be looking for them. It's so interesting to watch those elk from afar while they rut, because that one herd bull is doing his best, but he doesn't have the cows at all times. He's chasing the other bulls off, and when he does that... That's when another bull comes in and tries to steal her. And then he comes back, chases him off, another bull comes in. Like, dude, it's nonstop. He's like, just establishing dominance. <laughs> 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 They're just doing what elk do. Oh, oh. my gosh. So, yeah, things changed. Yeah. <laughs> we were so close to the herd and we decided to set up on some satellite bulls that we saw. They had no interest at all. <laughs> I think they actually ran away from the calls we did. And so now we're just trying to figure out where could the herd have gone, but it's just this maze of jungle junipers and hard to know where they may have bedded. So... Just an infestation. We are gonna try to go meet up with Casey and Trent and Andrew, put our heads together and come up with a game plan. Uh, we may stay out here all day do a little uh, ridge lunch, ridge nap, and then just hunt the evening. Or we may change plans, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do. These elk are different. They don't really freaking call during the day. Like once they get up towards their bedding area, they shut up and it's super frustrating. You know, coming from Oregon and some other places that I've been, I thought that, okay, well, yeah, they say that they just hunt the morning and the evening, and I thought we were going to get them going and everything. No. These elk, we've tried. These elk don't like it. They're picky. Pull harder. If you can't find the real herd, why don't you make your own? You guys have a real good elk. Way to work as a team. Yeah, it was rut fest, dude. So awesome, because here's so here's the last time I the saw. Last thing we heard was over there, but we weren't sure if that was the lone soldier you guys were talking about or the purple. Last time we saw him was about right there when we were over here on the other side last of the private. We saw. We did drop in that big canyon, come out. Yeah, last place I saw him, they came and jumped this fence right here. Right here. So do they have to be over there? Yeah. yeah. We heard a bugle like further to the south than this. Like over here. Right. So we, because we set up on the satellite bowls right in this canyon. Yeah. They came up here, but dude, they, they wanted, wanted nothing. nothing. They didn't want anything. See, there was a big bull for those guys to walk the same direction. A big bull. Big bull. Really? Yeah. He thinks it's bigger than the other one, but I he's, think it's he's bigger than third bull. Yeah. I'm not very smart. We cow called, we raked, we bugled. No. Did they just walk away? Nothing. Zero things. Huh. Should, have, should have done the ground. So this is going to be uh, what's in my bag video, but I actually have no idea what's in my bag. Andy, I don't know when he found time to do this, but packed everyone's snacks last night. Did you pack them in a, a, a Must have missed that one, huh? brown paper bag? Oh, you not. just packed our teams? <laughs> I did not get snacks. Really? That's what happened? Hold so it'd be better. Wait a minute. So it was Andrew team, it was and team Andy, snacks? Casey, and Trent today. What and what team Trevor and Brian. Only our team got snacks. Really? Wow. See the line? Hmm. Drawn in um, the sand. Trent, Stand Trent, on do your you side. remember this morning when uh, he made his own coffee and didn't help out? <laughs> yeah, actually I made you coffee. And there then he right. took <laughs> oh, look, he coffee. took your coffee. So, well, let's see what you guys are Oh my gosh. Let's see what you're missing out on here. I'm going to That's too bad. It's going to be Andrew. You got a Gatorade? Oh my god. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh that's a whole sando, not just a not just the bread part. <laughs> it's like we have a salami uh bagel sando. Homemade bagel. Wait a minute. So Oh that looks a half a half with some peanut butter. I have I have a little. We have Please. we have baby bells. Oh my dear. No wonder he wanted to do a what's in your backpack. <laughs> so he wants half of it. So Bag staged. of chips. Very this is staged. not stage. I had no idea. Look at tuna. And he was smart enough to throw a fork in there. Oh, that's pink salmon. Pink salmon. What, a Reese's? <laughs> oh, look at it. They're not even halfway. Look at king size Reese's. What the hell? White what, chocolate. White? Mm. We have beef snack sticks, mm. two granola bars, and a bag of some of my favorite airhead. Soft filled bites. 
This is my morning bag. And then I have breakfast or lunch and dinner in there as well. Can I like wrestle you for like a bite of that? We saw what happened when you tried that last time. <laughs> Someone got injured. I'm just over here having fun. You want this tuna? With my lunch. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. That, that, like a little bird, like Eric. Is that peanut butter and Cheeto? Oh my gosh. Yep. Cream cheese, pepperoni. Wow. Look at that. And gourmet um, jalapeno cream cheese. cheese. Jalapeno cream cheese. Oh. And we're eating. I gotta be honest, this salmon is not that good. But it's the chicken of the sea. I forgot you're a foodie. It's not gonna be fresh. It's darkest. Fresh caught. Yeah, he has chips and crackers. On the way to the Hatsing Bill today. <laughs> How's your little scrawny ass gonna do anything? I don't know. We'll figure it out though. It's this, higher than this that. This is what my chiropractor does. It's like right. It seems like right there. There. That hurts. You gotta push harder. There you go. Did it go in? Something happened. Ow. Good night, guys. <laughs> I'll see you on the evening hunt. I'll be right here. <laughs> Could anyone have a cigarette? <laughs> it hurts to laugh. Either that went in or another one went out. <laughs> Gosh. Maybe more than one. We're gonna do a vlog out of here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. and Mrs. YouTube. What we did today was spotted some elk this morning, hiked up a giant mountain, saw nothing, heard nothing, and now we're headed back to camp, recharge our batteries, get a little nap ski maybe. B Mac doesn't do well without a nap. And actually maybe Trevor. Probably Trevor. And we are coming back this evening to where we think that the elk are gonna be, which they may or may not. So that's the best eggs that we got for this basket. So that's the plan for this evening. And my cameraman is gonna fall down. So the eat. next time you see us, we'll either be sleeping, uh, using the uh, toilet, or shooting elk. What are the two? That's refreshing. I felt good. My second bath in a month. Not bad. There's some spots on there. Pretty sure we're gonna have, uh, the river's gonna blow out below. Oh, oh, that feels so good. I think that's good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. She's a little dirty. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how water Trent's bathing for the second time in 20 some days. It was my first time of bathing in 13 days, so it's getting a little, a little musky, a little bit musky. This is super cold, super refreshing. So Trent just washed his legs off and his feet. I got my head, hair, face, armpits. Look back. Oh. Casey's up next. Be careful on this first dip. Let's try to put it in. Let's go. You try to put it in. Yeah. 
to do an old glass and we saw those out this morning they went into we don't know where but hopefully somewhere up some of these basins so we're just sitting out here it's about five what 545 something like that now and um, anyway so um, we're hoping they come out just enough to where they give us because if we put all our eggs in one basin of the basket so if we all hike up just one basin and we're one or two off, we won't even hear them or see them or nothing. So we're anticipating that we can spot them first and maybe surround them and drown them is our plan. But I don't know. But on the upper side, I washed my legs today. I put on some new skivvies, uh, new socks. I always change my socks. Change them every day, at least once, if not twice a day. Put on some pit stick. What else did I do? Gold bond? Feeling clean is what I'm trying to say. I'm feeling clean. So those two trees at I'm trying to figure out where these bulls went this morning. Hi everybody. What do you got? Yeah, we're going Capri's tennis shoes t shirt and the lucky hat. So and we're upgrading to tripod Do you think you got binoculars. Hands-free, steady. If I see a little ear flicker, I'm gonna see it before these guys. Watch. Tech tip number 849. Using a tripod while glassing can increase your spotting of animals by up to 120%. You guys wanna see something cool? This is our new Brotherhood t-shirt. You can find it on our website at bornandraisedoutdoors.com. That was probably the largest shameless plug I've ever experienced in person. Say, say something dumb. Say, say something stupid. Well, uh, Trevor Fisher. Take it back to sixth grade. Dead or alive. You want a tech tip? Want a real good tech tip? You should clean that lens before shooting another photo. <laughs> I'm in my zone right now. You want a tech tip? Tech tip number 267. Never pick a unit that has no fallen logs in it because it makes going number two very difficult. Eagle-eye Casey's just spotted a bull up here. So we drove down the roadway, so we're just gonna try to go in and hopefully that hole hurts in there. We're hoping we only saw one out, but it's really thick. Next 
<laughs> you didn't screw up. <laughs> you didn't screw up. I screwed up so bad. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You missing? Yeah. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Was that awesome or what? Coolest things I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped the ball, man. You didn't drop the ball. We've worked as a team so hard for that opportunity and I just freaking screwed it up so bad. How far was he? Dude, he kept catching us out like he just popped his head out and so Oh you saw him more than once. Yeah he popped his head out and came out. So I ranged him 58 and he was quartering. He was slightly quartering so I wasn't gonna shoot and I didn't I wasn't even drawn and then all of a sudden he started walking right towards us. I seen him walk right through that big meadow. And turn and stop and I drew perfectly freaking 38 yards. I didn't hold for the hold for it because I had my pin set at 60. And I told myself, well, low, because I've shot my bow all summer with different ranges, so I've shot 60 at 40, and I know how low to aim. And I put it right in the money zone, it went right over his back. Right over his back. <clears throat> I feel terrible, man. No, I feel not terrible. for me not taking a bull, but for, dude, you worked your butt off for that. And that I was so much fun. Up. You didn't screw it up. I screwed it up big time. I don't know if I'll ever live that one down. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. He was screaming. He was, was, he was a good bull. Oh my god. He's beautiful. I just seen him right. I had like four trees and I could see him coming. I'm like, oh yeah, here it goes. This is gonna happen. As soon as I shot, I knew it. As soon as I shot, I knew it. I was like an idiot. Get two in the game, man. Ah. That's what it's all about. You did awesome, dude. Thanks. No problem. Good job. That's not, we're not having show and tell tonight. <laughs> <sighs> That's what it's all about, guys. As far as he's upset, I mean, he's distraught because we have worked really hard. But that's what it's all about: is being out here and doing it and learning from these things and and seeing these things. Because every opportunity you get, it's one more closer to getting one. So it was so cool. That was so awesome. Listen to him scream, and we finally got on him, and we worked all day for this. So yeah, that's a big win in my book. We called a bull in to bow range. That doesn't happen just to everybody. It was awesome. Guys, keep watching us. We're gonna keep at this, okay? We're gonna keep chasing these things all around this open country that I'm not used to at all. And um, tomorrow we're gonna see an arrow through an elk. Hopefully Trevor and BMAC got it done tonight too. So guys, like and subscribe if uh, you're enjoying this series. And uh, please tell a buddy about it or something. And uh, we're uh, excited to bring this to you guys, so. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. Want to see one page, guys? Oh, that's that's yellow sticky sheets. Oh, okay, that's enough. Guys, we're back with the Hutchin guys. Uh, hunt recap. Let's start out with hunt recap. Let's hunt just recap. let's just dive right into this thing. Face first. Face let's, first. Yeah, let's face first this thing. I have no explanations for anything that I did in the Elkwoods this year, besides my marbles were lost early and we never recovered them. I apologize. Is that, a, is that like a Peter Pan thing? Well, yeah. it, and it started Captain out on fire. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it went from a six yard. Well, before that, he killed an incredible mule killed deer. Killed my That's first right. mule deer with the bow this year. An awesome mule deer. Shot, Cody called me in a rosy to six yards I shot. Smoked it, Smoked one it. shot. Yep. My, my confidence was at an all time high and it just took one day of, of mistakes and they're at an all-time low. So that whole scenario and well you guys saw it we were on that bull like we're set up probably four different times as that roller coaster of emotion starts you know how it goes as far as okay it's gonna happen it's gonna happen oh it doesn't and then you're let back down and then oh he bugles again okay let's get the wind let's try to set up on him again okay this could happen and then it doesn't and so you're doing that roller coaster and then sometimes you're so jacked up that when it does finally happen which correct me if I'm wrong that was kind of the scenario like holy cow a little it, jacked up it's, I, just a touch it's one of those things that happens and it happens i you say so fast but it happened over a period of 45 minutes an hour yeah but that last crucial 30 seconds i can't remember exactly but i can remember this and this is one of the crucial mistakes i made this summer i experienced something i never experienced in my whole life 
of shooting a bow, which has been 30 years. I got what they call target panic. The best way for me to explain that was I decided to go with a five pin slider this year, in which I've shot five pins a lot. Typically I've been shooting a three pin slider. I'm shooting a five pin slider and shooting at all the total archery challenges and the 3D events and, and, and the target in my backyard is those five pins would just blur together and I'd just, what do we call it? Just slap, slap the trigger. Slap, slap in the trigger. The trigger. Send it. The trigger. So I was in a new place I'd never been this year. So I went to a one pin slider, which I talked a lot with people that shot the one pins. A lot of people disagree with them. My idea was a one pin slider will be great if I shoot it enough to know where it hits at different yardages, right? So if, I, if, if it's at set at 30, I know where that will hit at 40 or 50 yards. And that's how I killed my buck this year was I was ranged for 35, the buck came in at 52, I didn't have time to range, but I had shot it enough to know that it was about 8 to 10 inches where I needed to hold, and I killed the buck. Well, so when this bull came in, finally, the very last stand we made, the bull came out into the meadow, eating clumps of grass, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just enjoying his day, and I ranged the bull at 60 yards. So I set my pin at 60 yards, I was going to pull back when the bull dropped his head one more time. Well, instead of dropping his head, he picked his head up, and walk straight in. Well, in my head, I'm saying, okay, if he gets to this tree, it's 35 yards. I know where to, I know where to aim for that. Well, so when he gets to the tree, I first didn't stop the bull. We've Crucial. made some of those We've pairs learned that this year. trip, yes. right? And right when I pulled my bow back to anchor, that full aim low on the brisket went out the window, and I put it right where I wanted to hit, and as you could see, that arrow went to Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I have no excuses besides I just got really rattled. And I think that's, yeah, I mean, who hasn't, how long who hasn't you, got rattled? Yeah, how long have you bowed? Since I was 12 years old. Yeah. So, so 20, 24 years. 24 years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it can happen to anybody. And as I know you guys, all our viewers, and you guys will understand because you guys are positive people, but it's just like, it happens. It, it happens. How do we get over that? Practice, practice, practice. I mean, it's meant that this is like this the is mental, mental, this the is mental, mental side, side of bow hunting. Yeah. Yeah. This is the mental side of bow hunting that I need to learn how to slow everything down. We, we, we started it. saying things after all this happened. Yeah. Just slow down. Slow I think down. what happens to a lot of us is we are so concerned, and I think it even happened to Trevor to a degree when we called in his bull. Yep, We're bit. so worried that yeah. that elk is going to move through the window that we rush it. And because how many days well, have we taken to get right. to that moment, yep. right? Yep. And that's, that a, moment. I mean, the hardest part is like, it's, it's all a matter of inches and seconds in bow hunting and you have to kill on your first opportunity. So it's like that, right. There's a fine balance between pushing the limits too much and making it happen when you need to. Totally. And getting buck fever or elk fever is a very real thing. Real. Oh man. Very real. <laughs> It's right? very real. It's not it's like real. shooting at a target. No. It, it's, it's pretty real. <laughs> and, yeah, pretty real. you know, honestly, no excuses, but the camera adds another layer of, like, anxiety or pressure sometimes. It can, definitely, definitely. Um, and between I think, that and trying to stop the bull, right. trying to get anchored, and, and all I, the other variables. I think everybody does it different. I think the, yeah. the, the mind play through the head, everybody does different. Um, see, for me, like, if something happens quick, I am I lose it total basket case if something takes a long time to develop i talk myself you off talk the ledge through it. and just be like okay yeah. got this and it, it's just like but if it's a quick thing oh man <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's different for everybody i guess what what i would say the recommendation is have your own setup and do that in practice so get what i do is every single stand every single setup that i get in i first set move my feet, feet. i set yeah. my feet to where i'm going to yeah. shoot just like i wouldn't practice mm -hmm. and i get my grip i'll put my hand in my bow and my bow arm and get my grip. And then from then on, it's just yardage, 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 yardage. And you want, I, I, I just kind of take that over my head as, okay, I need to make sure yardage is right before I even try to shoot at this thing. And I just try to go through those steps in my head. Everybody does it different. I'm sure you guys do it well, at your own way. There's other things that I've learned on this experience, going back to my bull in Oregon, is number one, we've talked about this, but always stop the bull, yeah. which again, is something to practice. Yeah. Because once you get set and you get anchored and you have a reed in your mouth, if you haven't ever practiced calling while at full draw and trying to anchor, that's another variable that takes some work. Because it kind of, a, you know, when you're calling, you're going to readjust where you're, you're anchoring. And so yeah. all those little things are things that I've committed to practice this coming off season. So when that happens again, we'll be prepared to do it. I'm pretty convinced though, like, so if you watch the shot closely, which I have probably a thousand times since it happened, it's on my phone. Uh, it's on my phone. You think at 30 yards, you could shoot a kill bull, hit it, you know, where you need to with him taking a step. But if you watch that video, that bull takes one step and it puts that arrow a foot and a half 
behind just that at thing. 30 yards at yeah. 30 yeah. yards and that's yeah. a yeah. slow sure. step too. that's a and slow step around yeah so yeah. stopping a bull's huge i'm a big believer that you could fart with your mouth and stop a bull that close like well, any noise i was gonna say i'm surprised the cat meow <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's where i was going it it's came like, out where after was, the bull where was the every you? time it came after, after. every it time after. it comes out after <laughs> you guys give me a hard time because it sounds like a cat but one of these days uh, it's gonna work uh, yeah. it works all the time it works all the time it stopped the bull killed the bull <laughs> one other thing i want to say is sharing camp with good people like these guys makes really difficult situations like that better because in my head when that happened I totally just crushed the baby bird and it wasn't for the fact of me taking a bull home which I really wanted to do it was the fact that we had worked so hard to get an opportunity like that and that's what we always say you're hunting for that opportunity and when you're presented that opportunity and you totally just throw it out the window like I did I felt bad for these guys because I was lucky enough to have that opportunity and it wasn't you know, somebody else like Brian that would have probably kept it. But these guys made me feel a lot better that night at camp. Trent rubbed my feet. It was great. <laughs> those are one of those like, you, know? you just want to redo so oh, One so redo, yeah, and you're like, like, come on. That was a time machine Let moment, man. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like you drop to your knees and it's mulligans. like, just give me one yeah. mulligan. Yeah. yeah. But no, it's, it's a learning lesson and I feel like I'm going to be a better hunter because of it. And hopefully you guys can learn something too and have what? learned something from watching me just do that a few times this year. <laughs> I always say this, you can't appreciate the good times until you go through those. So exactly. the bull, you know, when you get one, it's only that much better because you experience those ultimate lows. It, it makes the highs higher. That yeah, is yeah. true. Oh, that's that's true. Nice. Peaks in the valleys. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But I mean, the reality is just because we are sharing some experiences on film and on YouTube, does not by any means make us any form of professionals no. at, it, at all. So no. We're not expert hunters. We are just mm. normal guys <laughs> that like to go out and chase elk and we make a yeah. ton of mistakes all the time and we generally capture it all on film <laughs> and share it with you guys. Um, so unfortunately it, it happened but you know we've got this whole off season and I think we've all committed to learn from these situations and just commit to getting better for when we get out there next August. Yeah. Just call me the professor because I'm going to teach you what you don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was so hard to even edit back through that because you were, you could just see it in your eyes right after you shot. You mean hard. Every, every time I show oh, up, here's you, another you thing. walk away laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never laughed. It was a, it was a snicker. <laughs> but, uh, well, you okay, so I didn't know. Let, actually, let me throw something out there real quick. I didn't even know that he shot. And I was raking with a stick back there and, and stomping on the ground and I didn't hear his bow go off and he kind of snuck out to go after the elk afterwards. So once I knew it was all over, I could see him way up there and he was walking back. And so as I'm walking up to him, I didn't think he shot. So I threw the stick down on the ground like, yeah. oh, we were, oh, we were so close. <laughs> Casey gets these eyes about this big and he's just like, he wants to beat me up now. <laughs> I'm not Why are you so mad? I thought Trent was going to beat me with his big logger vlogger hands. Yeah. He has big hands. He comes up throwing, I'm, t I'm crying. And like so I'm baby. like all frustrated like, oh, we almost, we almost got a shot. And he just starts balling and I'm like no 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 I'm not gonna no I'm gonna hurt you oh, <laughs> it was, it was uh, yeah oh, so that's why times. that's the way that's the way it went down in my eyes <laughs> I forgot about the stick throw yeah uh, now, yeah now it's it's terrifying. Stick throw. <laughs> Trent that call-in was by far the one of the coolest call-ins we've had like you said it was, it was you know it was a long call-in we heard these bulls bugling right when we left the truck got close and it was one of those deals where we went from bugle and we'd bugle back and he wouldn't hear anything this bull would bugle and we went back and forth what three times oh back and forth like, after. yeah because yeah, we only had a short amount of time before dark so we're like whichever one and we seems... did that three times before we finally settled in on this bull and uh it was awesome and so, it was the herd bull which we did the, made the right call i think the other one was a satellite i don't ever think he would have came in yeah we had to get super close to him uh that's why we kept on pushing and pushing he would come so far but you could hear his cows and he didn't want to, it was thick enough in there. I, I think he wanted still vision of his cows, be able to yeah. watch them. And so that's, we had to push right on him. And then, and then he comes in eating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like what? he steps out, yeah. bugles, yeah. and What's just up, like, guys? picks up mouthful of grass. <laughs> the greatest thing about videoing these, these experiences, because at the time, in my head, I was like, oh, this bull's so hot. He's gonna come and fight Trent. And he comes out and I thought he was like raking his horns on the ground. We watched the video back, he's just eating grass. He yeah. knew he was the biggest on the yeah. mountain, I think. He's, he's like, like, what are you gonna do? I don't him? have anything to worry about. Yeah. Well, so, it's so I've fun to film these things because you is. actually get to relive them and, yeah. and learn from those mistakes where, in moments where you're like, 
I just wish I knew what happened. And yeah. You know, you can go back and look at the videos and see exactly what happened. Definitely. I'm just bummed that I wasn't there and missed out yes. for the hunting, for yes. the brotherhood, and for the food. Yes. Well, you did miss out on some good sushi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that and the bag of chips in the field, you know, from the day before. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. Somebody and, had it, I'm like, well, we're going to get hungry at some we point. Had, uh, Trent had a full tent in his backpack just in case things got weird. <laughs> <laughs> and we needed some shelter. The yeah. whole trip. There's a lot of times you camp, you know, two, three hundred yards from the road. <laughs> There's a lot of times you can do that. Steaks. You just got to have it. Got to have it. With. So we got one more day of Idaho left here. I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying this series. Like I said, we've gone from Oregon and the rainforest, coast range of Oregon, to the pristine meadows and timber of Wyoming, to the thick jack, jack pine in Colorado and now into the wide open. The Berry Juniper. Wasteland. Yeah. The <laughs> Juniper. Berries of Idaho. Yeah. So it's so cool. So we've cool. got Montana coming up next. And as you imagine there's been a little bit of snow so far in Montana. October gets a little sketchy. It's probably so. gonna be a little chilly. Things get frigid. I'm gonna be honest. With <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. You were wishing you were back in the uh, in the old pop-up tent. <laughs> Whew, yeah. yeah, back yeah, in the creek. A little different. Yeah, it does, it does. Um, to end this out, guys, I want to do a quick shout out. We didn't on the last video, but uh, you guys, I want to leave it open to you guys. Anybody that you know, anybody that um, you'd like to do a big shout out for? Yeah, I think B-Max got really, I got, really I got a good one. Yeah, Brian's got a good shout out. Cool. So my shout out goes to Joe Emmons, but more specifically than Joe, it is his nine-year-old son, Parker. So I saw the video that Parker and his dad, Joe, posted on a Facebook forum called Elk Attic. We're going to put the video up right now. My name is Parker and I'm nine years old and I'm from Eugene, Oregon and I'm going to do a bugle and I've watched Born and Raised and the Hush Crew um, from, since day one of the Land of the Free Project and make sure you guys go um, check out their channel and subscribe. So now I'm going to do a bugle and I don't have a reed in my mouth and I'm using this tube and it doesn't have anything. So here I go. But Parker is absolutely killing it with the mouth can we just rent killing it. Can we that, rent Parker next year for is, September? Is he that for chuckle hire? Is he was for just hire? like oh, like it, He reminded me of Dirk. He yeah. sounded just like yeah, Dirk. Just yeah. Lip balling, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had that whole like yeah. So yeah I was just, killing I, it, man. I, when You're I watched it the first cool. time I'm like where's that coming from though? Yeah. Like, I mean, I used to do it, like Casey said, when you were young, but that, yeah, he, he killed he it. Nailed and, it. And let's be honest, aside from the bugling itself, uh, how good was the intro, Parker? Dude, showing the <laughs> yeah. bugle? Future YouTuber, no doubt about it. You killed it, buddy. Thank Branding you for all your support, support man. Let's yeah. clap next year. <laughs> we're renting them for the whole month, so. There you go. Okay. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate you putting that up. And, Anything, uh, anybody else? I, I want to uh, shout out just to anybody and everybody that's even commenting on these guys' videos and ours. I'm seeing a lot of comments coming on even our channel on videos that are not in collaboration with this series. They're like, hey man, I watch you guys and Born and Raised Outdoors, or I don't even watch cable anymore. I watch Born and Raised and Hushin. And like just seeing those two together and seeing as many as I am, I think that's so cool. It's and cool. the positivity that everyone, yes. I mean, it's just, if you go through on YouTube on some other videos in other areas, it, YouTube's, can get a little ugly and i just <laughs> love the fact yeah. that you guys are so positive so uh, positive. you know big time yeah the the number of comments throughout this entire series and the, just the engagement and the amount of people that you can tell have actually followed along for day by day is really overwhelming again yeah. thank you guys for all the support shout out to all of you guys can i shout out a charity absolutely i want to give a shout out because it's coming down to the wire right now yep. um for a kid we know sawyer who has started an organization a charity um, that we're really fond of, um, but it's called Sheds for Santa. So the idea was people could auction off their sheds they'd found, and he was going to donate to some needy families around Utah. Well, his goal this year, he I think he raised upwards of $30,000 yeah. last year, wow. but his goal was uh, to raise $50,000 this year, um, and that was going to go to help 100 needy families. And so it ends, I believe, on the 15th. He's trying to collect by the 15th so they can take yes. the money, shop, gift, wrap, and everything on the 16th. And then, and then obviously so distribute. He's, distribute. he's just right around 30000 so far, so we need a big push here in the last week or so. Yeah, so exactly. you can either go and bid on some of these sheds they're doing. Eric is, is uh, um, auctioning off some, uh, some a replica set of the Fireball right now. 
I'm going to be doing one on Monday. These guys are going to be doing one. Yeah. But if you can't go and spend a bunch of money on a shed or mm -hmm. a set of horns, you can go to shedsforsanta.com and you can just donate 5, 10, 15, whatever, whatever amount of money you can get, uh, you can do with, away with. So I uh, just want to shout out Sawyer and uh, Sheds for Santa. Awesome. That's a good shout out. Really good. Awesome. Nailed it. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. I uh, just want to thank the Hutchin guys for being here. If you don't already, Thanks I'm for sure, having us. I'm sure you guys fun. do. Yeah. I'm sure you guys follow them already. <laughs> but uh, go follow them if you haven't already. And uh, have a Merry Christmas, I, and we'll I talk to you soon. Please, please, please follow Brian on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? What do you got? One question that I'm sure people are wondering. Will people see a Hush from Born and Raised Outdoors collaboration next year? It's in there the could works. be. I don't know. I don't uh, know. 2.0 land. <laughs> I don't know. We, 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 not, we might not be big enough for them next year. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have a feeling we, that there could be something. <laughs> but we, first, maybe like a small stream trout first, fishing. We will catch something. steelhead. <laughs> we will catch steelhead in March. A small stream maybe. trout fishing on a fish pond. <laughs> yeah, we might do. I don't know, a rabbit hunt or something like that. Something, <laughs> something will really we, get you we've guys. We've got going. some things in the works. Yeah, so hundred percent. We do. We do. Can't wait till next year. All right, guys, we're guys, done on this one. We'll see you. MySpace.com, Brian <laughs> McElroy. Follow it.